just yesterday I was talking to Molly about uh, some inner challenges I'm having around the acceptance of my dyslexia. I'm realizing within myself that there is always cycles that I'm trying to break. One of the major cycles in my life were bad relationships and um, my, my, not just the relation, not just the other person, but me uh, figuring myself out and learning how to relate with someone instead of trying to convince someone to like me or having built relationships based on, you know, tricking someone to, to spend time with me. And now uh, the relationship wasn't working, but I, I feel like I've broken that, that cycle and I'm in the happiest relationship I've ever been. But another major cycle for me is my work and what I do for a living, how I put my energy into the world and I have been largely experiencing a great sadness around my educational upbringing and that there were an increased heightening of the industrial school system process as I was growing up, but especially in Philadelphia, which was notoriously one of the worst school systems in the country. And having gone back a few years ago to my school and showed Molly and she's like, this looks like a prison yard. I, I, I'm amazed that you went to school here. And so there's a lot of things that I've been uncovering related to not only that experience, but how that has been a part of my programming to try endlessly to be a good student. And I think many millennials are struggling with uh, a detachment of this, this constant working. And, you know, we blame it on things. We say it's capitalism. It's the industrial school system. Blah, 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 blah. So when I'm pointing at these things out, I'm not necessarily blaming because it's my responsibility to create my path forward. But this is diagnostic and I'm trying to understand um, why I feel this way. And there's a bit of mourning that I experience with getting to know my dyslexia and accepting it. And that I keep trying to do the same things that I thought I could do before. I, I look at people that are doing amazing video essays on YouTube or that they're writing amazing emails to captivate their audience or they're writing books or they are having a blog that is generating revenue and traffic and, and helping people. And those are all things that I've wanted to do. And those are all things that I have trouble with because of my dyslexia. And I'm having a difficulty accepting and imagining a new way uh, from that. Because I, th I think very similar to school where there's this competition element and you're kind of looking around and seeing that other people are doing well, they're getting A's and you might not be... Uh, and all of this stuff, I think there's a part of me that is trying to distance myself from this comparison and competition element to start to individuate. individuate. I'm like, okay, well, what's going to work for me? What do I really want to do? What do I enjoy? What is going to be fulfilling for me? And then subsequently, what's going to be uh, fruitful and lucrative in terms of making sure that we're not only surviving, but are thriving. Uh, not in excess. I don't want to live an excessive life. I just want to be able to, uh, right now we're paying the bills and I just finished my taxes and I've got to pay my taxes over time because I don't have a lump sum to be able to pay my taxes because I couldn't afford to save money for my taxes because I had my bills to pay. And so uh, don't take that as a confession, IRS, if you're listening. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I doubt it. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I want to be able to, you know, we're not in a place where we're saving money right now and we're not able to expand our possibilities of, of taking the kids to do activities or to uh, have more space. Like our daughter's getting older and she's going to need more privacy and that sort of stuff. So uh, I know that the current track of trying to push my dyslexia is not sustainable and I'm trying to think of alternative ways. Now there are topics that I'm still very much interested in. I, I like podcasting. I like sharing my story. I like 
personally journeying, journaling in this way. And I have book ideas. So I'm actually playing around with the idea of instead of writing a book, of just doing a straight up audio book or like a course, we're just making courses out of those ideas. Um, the courses might not even be the right idea. It's just like an audio book kind of thing. Uh, a series of podcasts in a way that all connect under one main idea that have kind of a narrative to it and it's interconnected and there is a either a lesson or something to learn from it or something you can take away from it and something that just wouldn't necessarily work as a series of podcasts but something that would be a collective unit that is sellable and um, that brings value right and in a lot of ways it's about getting into flow and I haven't had the ability to get into flow because of this dyslexia. Again, not blaming my dyslexia. It's just my brain. But if I'm accepting that this is an, a, a piece of my reality, this is, this is information, then I can be brave enough to make those adjustments. And it's hard because these things are going to take time and it's very easy for me to panic and say like, well, I need to change everything all at once. And you know, we just need to wipe the slate clean and start over. Um, that's not necessarily possible. I, I need to stay, stay the route that I'm in, in some ways and change in other ways. So with dopamine, for example, like I said, with doing audio courses or something like that, I, I have a much better time. Not only is it more natural for me to explain things this way, um, and I, and I do enjoy writing. That's the problem. It's like, I really do enjoy writing. I just, it's just a, something I, I, it just taxes my, my brain to use all this language all the time. So it's, it's accepting this is like accepting a disability, but it's accepting something that is not obviously, um, debilitating. It's something that I can conceptually ignore if I want to, and then deal with the consequences, right? Especially as a, a self-preservation repressed in the Enneagram, I tend to push myself for way further than I need to. Like if I got a pee, I'm going to hold it until the last possible second. I still do that to this day. Um, that's just something that is uh, a part of that experience. Uh, but it's not like I, I have a limb chopped off and I have to immediately compensate for it. This is something where I have to reroute my conscious awareness to, you know, to not just fall into these habits and how that relates to the school system is that I've kind of developed this habit of, of wanting to be a grade A student. And it's in a way a shadow element because in school, I just said that I didn't care and I didn't bother trying and and really, I was experiencing this frustration, uh, and as a result, feeling like I was stupid, and still kind of feeling like I'm stupid or inadequate or unable, right? Because I see some of the things that people are doing, and I'm like, I feel like I could do it equally or better, but, you know, there's the physical, and it's a, it's a physical thing, you know, there's a part of my brain that gets squeezed as a result of overusing um, uh, language, um, particularly reading and writing. And it does happen when I talk too much or listen too much, but, um, it's not as bad with talking. So there's another element too, of I'm, I'm getting to know my, my sillier self, my more comedic self, my fun self. And there's probably something with that. I want to play with possibly starting a gaming YouTube channel just to play around and see what happens. Um, and so there are things I want to try, but because I'm an adult and we've got bills to pay, the, the room for taking risks is not like it used to be. But there are adjustments I can make. And I realized that, you know, the big thing that's taking up a lot of my space is having all of these book ideas. And if I can find a way, if you happen to know, I, I did a little bit of research into how to get audio books on Kindle, but it seems like you have to have a written book first. And I'm trying to find a way to get audio books that are like the equivalent of getting a lecture onto uh, Audible or something like that, and and not necessarily a written book. Um, I know that I can probably get what I've spoken 
transcribed and all that stuff, but I can't quite afford to do that. And also editing all of that text, I'd probably have to pay someone to do that because that would be not great for my dyslexia as well. So I'm trying to just rein it into what's practical, what's possible, and make those adjustments. And I'm kind of in the midst of making those adjustments. And there's a lot of emotional mourning the loss of some ideals, of some possibilities, of some of my potential. And in a way, it's forcing me to individuate, individuate, um, and, and go my own path and figure out my own way to, to make this happen. That doesn't involve sitting down and writing. And, um, it's just going to be a new way. It's going to be a new path. And, um, I'm curious, I have some ideas that I want to write one of them is called personality strategy. I don't quite have the subtitle worked out yet, but the main idea is getting to know how it's kind of this connection between persona and ego, how we present ourselves in order to protect ourselves. Maybe that's the subtitle. And so I'm, I'm curious, I want to use like different models. I want to talk about Myers Briggs and the Enneagram in particular, because they have this connection between persona and ego and um, probably a little bit of spiral dynamics, a little bit of, of some of these other maps and models that have helped me get to know myself a little bit, plus my mental health story. I've got ideas to share more of my mental health story um, that I've talked about in this podcast and kind of organize it into something that can translate into a helpful piece of material. Um, I've got a bunch of different ideas. Not off the top of my head, I have them written down, but more INTP-related uh, content that I can talk more about shadow functions. I can talk about empowerment. I can talk about, uh, maximizing thinking. So for example, cosmic calibration, I think is the best example of what I want to continue doing. Cosmic calibration is a program I have on happychemicals.org that is for INTPs looking to expand their intuition. And through that expansion of intuition, expanding the capabilities and possibilities of your thinking Because if you expand and try new things, you have more things to use the sword of your introverted thinking on, right? It's like having one little piece of carrot and clean slicing that with your introverted thinking. Like the little carrot represents your introverted sensing. But if you go out into the world and you collect all sorts of different kinds of carrots, then you have a lot of things to slice. And it gives more experience to your introverted thinking. You have more diverse experiences to know what to clean slice and how to slice it and all of this stuff. And so it's about how to get out into the world, how to, uh, what to try in terms of exploration and then ways to maximize, uh, your thought process. And then consequently also improve your extroverted feeling and relating to people and adapting to various cultures. And all of that also nurtures your introverted sensing experience because now you're choosing the things that you like, and you're not just defaulting to the things that you're used to. And so that course is a series of audio audios. And, um, that is in essence what I want to do more of. So if you have checked out cosmic calibration, uh, let me know in the comments how that experience was for you so far. Everyone said that's a very positive experience for them. And some things have clicked, especially around like vision versus goals, uh, how to think about the future. Um, Uh, some ways to create distinctions between introverted thinking and extroverted feeling, because sometimes it feels like you're doing one when you're actually doing the other. And um, there's just a lot of interesting stuff there. So if I mentioned, if there's any topic that has been on this channel, but then also the personality strategy idea uh, or sharing more of my mental health story, there's any of those things that would resonate to you or something that you would want to have as an audio book, let me know in the comments. I would love to really know where your head is at and what you need help with. And if that connects to something that I'm working on and I'm willing to talk about, because I don't necessarily want to do it if, if, if there's no interest. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. These are just ideas that I have and I think I want to play with them. But if, if I accept that this is an audio thing, then I'll be more likely to do it instead of trying to push myself to do the text-based thing. Does that make sense? So I just wanted to share that as a part of my, uh, 
process of accepting my dyslexia. And I know some of you may be dealing with something similar or, or some sort of learning disability and um, making adaptations to that is a challenge. So I just want to say that I see you, I hear you, and I'm working on it too. And I'll be sharing more of that story as I go along. So I very much appreciate you, happychemicals.org, or where the courses are. If you want to go check out Cosmic Calibration, if you're trying to expand your intuition, that is a great place to start. And um, that's it. So I appreciate you so very much. Thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll catch you next time on Dopamine. See ya.